Hi, this is Maya Giannone, and here's my review for The Red Hood, The Lost Days, Issue 2. And that's um, 2 of 6. And Brightest Day, number 5. Um, I'm going to do Red Hood first. There's going to be some spoilers, so if you have any remember these books, then you're probably going to want to come back later. Now, it starts off, you have Jason Todd, he's in... If you remember, he was thrown in the Lazarus pit. And he basically now has pretty much full memory of what's what happened to him. And he's kind of going a little psycho. He's damaging a hotel room. Beats up on some hotel employees. And then um, one thing I would like want to comment on was this blood. Now, if you're going to draw blood, it, it's, you know, it's fine. But this looks really bad. Because it doesn't even look the way blood should look like if it's being, like, Spew, like thrown around out of people's faces and mouths and noses and crap like that. It just looks pretty sloppy. I wish they did a better job at that. Anyways, so he's throwing a temper tantrum and he finds out because he, he read a newspaper where Batman cut the Joker and basically put him in jail yet again rather than killing him, which I'm still trying to figure out why he didn't do that. Well, yeah, Raul Ghul's pissed off because t Jason Todd is was basically freed, and he's like, "Woman, that boy is going to be trouble. You have released a pestilence on this land," and you know she's got nothing to say about that. Well, anyways, um, Jason Todd's basically yeah, Jason Todd's on the the run. They give you a recap of his um, of uh, what happened to him. And he's basically being followed because they're trying to keep tabs on him. Now, what he does is to get away. It's not it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out where he's going to go. He wants to go to Gotham, so what he does is he hooks up with a mercenary group, and then they're basically transporting him over to the U.S. type thing. Well, he gets there and he wants to. He basically has a plan for Batman, and he knows he can't go to Wayne Manor, which, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, that might be an idea. If, you know, you want to do something nice, but obviously he's kind of twisted in the head, and he doesn't want to do anything nice. So he stalks Batman, and he knows what he needs to do to do that. He looks for the Batmobile. How do you look for the Batmobile? You basically need to put Batman, you need to know where Batman's going to be. So he sets into motion, um, a series of events where it's like a weapons shipment and sure enough he knows Batman shows up he knows how to get to the Batmobile and he carefully does that and he decides to set a bomb underneath the Batmobile and um, sure enough Batman comes back from the, his um, beatdown of uh, criminals and um, it looks like he's about to detonate the bomb but for whatever reason, at the time, he decides not to. Now, later on, he basically mentions the fact that he didn't want to do it because, you know, if he did it, then Batman doesn't know why he died. He wants to make Batman suffer. So, now that sets the chain in motion as to the Red Hood and quest for vengeance type thing. Now, I don't know, it's like, I, I'm still going to get it because I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to do. But the thing is, see, I hate when they do kind of filler stuff like that because Batman would have known that eventually found out that there was explosives underneath his car. And I think that that would have set a chain in motion into what happened. And since obviously he didn't find explosives because there was nothing there to begin with, it kind of makes me go, you know, you're kind of doing this weird retcon that if you lose any sense of logic, doesn't make sense any longer because if Batman found explosives he would investigate what happened but anyways I just look at it as huh, it's another unexplained thing another change in the story no big deal two years from now will it matter it won't you know because it'll it'll all make sense then anyways uh, I'm still iffy on it but it was still entertaining next up was uh, Brightest State number five now I was really, really close to the point of just canceling this out all, all right altogether. 
but they changed the format and the way the story was presented, and that kind of captured my interest again. Now, you have Aquaman and Tula, and they're, they're basically, this is mirroring what's happening right now in the Gulf with the oil spill, and then they're basically capping the oil wells now. So, on the, this is the part that doesn't make sense. You have oil in the water. They need, and then the fish are dying, but yet Aquaman is able to breathe in this water and not have any side effects. I mean, you know, it's like, the, it's kind of like understand creative license and you gotta get your story told. But there's, you know, there's things where I'm like going, common sense, you know, obviously he's not gonna be able to breathe this water. So just change the story a little bit. Maybe put a mask on his face, do something. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the videos of the, the divers in the, the ocean and they're covered in tar and that tar of the oil and whatnot. And, you know, Aquaman's still bright, colorful, uh, hair is perfect, and there's none of that. And I'm like, it kind of just, when I see this stuff kind of sloppiness, it just kind of bothers me. Well, anyways, he gets attacked and... You know, there's the mystery woman, and then there's a group of soldiers, and they're like, ready to do battle. And I'm like, oh, this is all we're going to get. And sure enough, that's all we get, because we go back to Hawk and Dove. Now, dead live man is tries to raise the original Dove, but he's not able to. Now, what's interesting here is the ring tells him no. Somewhere around here, I can't remember now. Oh, I think that's actually farther ahead. Well, anyways, we go back to Aquaman. And they're battling. The battle part was pretty cool. I really appreciate that. But the power-up attacks were pretty cool. The way they manipulated the water to form weapons. The hammerhead sharks. I thought the art was good. The way the fire just kind of blended in with everything. So, you know, even though I, I'm complaining about it earlier, I, I can appreciate these pages here. And, um... Mira, escapes and um, now we have recognition between the people and because she's like Arthur we got to get out of here there's gonna be more people and they jump back into the oil filled water now then we go see the Hawkman people so you know already we have some good because there's actually more Aquaman stuff going on rather than two pages in that set now anyways with Hawkman they're on the Hawk world and this was kind of gross where they're kissing each other and then you can see the black uh, lantern ring effect here and you can see that gook like that. They, so they know that there's something going on and then they get attacked by these uh, pan lion, panther, tiger type people and the, this part was awesome. A lot of battling, a lot of savage battles, fights, blood, then these hawk people come and gorish, bloody battle. I'm like, yes, I really, do. I can really appreciate this. Um, hawk girl gets taken away and um, Hawkman gets rendered unconscious. Now this is where the ring, the ring tells um, Dead Man that, he, that the original Hawk, I mean sorry, the original Dove will not rise. So what they try to do is they say, well, he's like telling um, the current Hawk, well, you know, he's at rest. He doesn't want to come back. So he he's fine, you know, and he wants you to know that don't worry about it. Don Don's fine. And um, he's like, bullshit, you know, that's that's a bunch of crap. Well, so they say, well, why don't we try, Dove is like, well, why don't we try my sister? She didn't die. And, you know, and she's, I mean, when she died, she's not at rest. She's angry. She wants to come back. And this is when the ring tells him, uh, Boston, you shouldn't be doing this. And then I'm like, now I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. Now... We go back to the Hawkman, and then beast people, blood, picking feathers, awesome. I was like, yes. And then we go to the final part of Aquaman, where um, they explain who everybody, she explains who those people are, and um, there's a reason why that they know her. And I'll save that one as to why, as so that way you give you incentive to want to read it. Now, overall, I really, really like this book. Uh, it really piqued my interest again. 
Uh, oh, yeah, and then Mar Martian Manhunter is coming up after this one. So in issue six. I really prefer this style of writing better where you have just, okay, we have like three stories that let's devote lots of pages to those stories rather than two pages here, two pages there. And then it's like, oh, come on. You know, you don't start, stop, start, stop. Give me something. And now they start and they gave me something. Something to at least advance the story, like wrap me in even more and want me to read more. Um, so I'm back on board, at least for right now, for Brightest Day. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it on the side. Um, tell me, what do you guys think of the Red Hood? Do you think it's as good so far? Do you think it's um, like just a really bad attempt at a, ret a retcon? Uh, subscribe to the channel, and until next time.